Hey, this is Joseph from Gorilla 3D. Uh, I'm going to be showing you guys a little bit of my progress on what I eventually uh, started to work on here. Um, so I wanted to get a 3D modeler started, well, not so much modeler, just being able to manipulate objects uh, in a top uh, right and left view. And I also put the bottom here. Um, let me see if I can get this in perspective here. Um, so this is my left view, this is my top, and this is my right. Um, so if I drag a circle from my left to uh, here, as you see, my top is following my left here. And if I drag it down, it's going to follow with my right, uh, just how it should be. Um, and the same goes with my right. If I, if I drag it here, my, my top goes up and down as my right. Uh, and the same goes for, for this as well. So if I drag my top, it can move both of them. Um, so that part is pretty much figured out. It's really easy. Um, all, I, all I'm doing is really like some small constraints. I'm using the tools to kind of handle the drop and drag. Um, and then these, the, the circle is actually a, a canvas object. The entire thing is not in canvas. Uh, so that way I can actually interact with the objects using the typical DOM methods. Um, so yeah, other than that, um, another thing I've been trying to do is actually do orthographic rendering. So uh, I have a Susan here. Uh, let's see if I can actually get this perspective. Uh, Susan here, which is the uh, Blender 3D default monkey uh, model that you can get. Um, and I outputted this into my little uh, pixie uh, scene graph-ish kind of uh, representation. As you see, uh, it's doing uh, some sort of z-buffering. It's not really great, as you can see. Like There's some points where there's, there's spaces coming out of each other. Um, but it's taking that and rendering it on the canvas in 2D. It's not using the, the WebGL or OpenGL or any kind of already 3D rendering mechanism. And it, it's not really slow. I just don't want to be render, run, rendering, uh, running it at full speed. Um, but I can go ahead and try to give an attempt. I'm already doing it at, what is that, 10 frames per second. So I'm not sure how well this will be. Uh, give me one second. Let's see, try this at 100. 100 milliseconds per second. So if I refresh, nah, it's a little bit smoother. Um, and really, it doesn't take that much um, computational stuff. This is a 640 by 480 window, and it's clearing the entire screen and redrawing everything all over again. So uh, it's pretty fast. And this is running on a netbook, so I'm screencasting and I'm running this at the same time. Uh, so hopefully I can I can apply this. I just really need to figure out how to... Uh, get the faces to show without having this problem where they're coming through each other. Um, but other than that, it's um, come pretty good. And I'm going to show you guys some of my source code here. Um, let me see if I can get some better view. Cool. Um, I have a lot of, I was testing a lot of math stuff, so you can see I'm doing a lot of matrix stuff here, but none of that's really important. Um, I just want to show you guys the orthographic here, orthographic function. All it does is take the x, y, z coordinates of a pix of a, of a, of a vertex, uh, so points of a, maybe a cube or whatever you're trying to do, uh, and I push this into a vector create. And vector create is a part of Sylvester's ma matrix uh, calculations. Uh, and so this way I can actually uh, do easier matrix -y calculate uh, multiplication and addition, whatever, rather than doing all these all this stuff. It just let's call it from a few functions. So. It does that, um, and then the offset is obviously uh, the panning of the of the screen. Uh, so my top and bottom, my x and y axis, uh, and then I have my scale matrix, which is basically saying that there's 40 pixels per unit. So every one unit in 3D is 40 pixels on a screen. Um, so that does that, and all I do is take my scale matrix and multiply it against my points, and then add the offset, and that gives me the x and y axis of the uh, of the 2D pixel I need to draw. Um, perspective is a lot more difficult. I can kind of show you the start of this, uh, but basically you get your, your rotation of your X, Y, and Z, the yawn, pitch, and roll, um, and then you start to multiply them against that and you get the, the matrix. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. I didn't finish it. Um, um, so now we're actually going to where the world is created and stuff. Uh, so I have my basic camera defined here. Um, and so it has the position and the degrees. Degrees need to be um, converted to radians at some other point. So like one degree is 0 .00, 0 something one percent of a radian. Um, but uh, yeah, so and then here's my my monkey. Uh, let me go ahead and see if I can 
uh, get that open real quick. It's just a bunch of uh, uh, pixels, not pixels, uh, vertices that are defined in with their faces. So as you see, there's tons and tons of lines of vertices that make up this thing. I think there's 500 plus, and then there's 500 faces. Uh, I'm supporting both uh, quad and, and tri triangulated uh, faces, uh, and I can support as many as I want. There isn't a, any limit to say how many vertices per face that I can actually support. Um, so, and actually going to a little bit of this, uh, I just go through all the world vertices and apply my uh, camera rotation to it. Um, and let me see if I can open that up real quick. Let me show you. So my camera rotation is just uh, the rotation. Basically, what you saw my my perspective. We're getting the uh, the yaw and pitch and roll, which is versus the z axis of my uh, of my rotation, and then it's my x axis, and then it's my y axis, and this is considered the right handed. Uh, top-down view of, of 3D. There's right-handed and left-handed. So if it was left-handed, Z would be replaced with Y and Y would be replaced with Z. Um, and that will give you a different view of the uh, the world that you're trying to render. <sighs> okay. Anyways, I, I do matrix um, operations on them. As you can see, I convert them to radians before I even push them into my matrix because it's needed. Um, so we'll go back into this, to the start of this. Uh, I take each uh, point of my vertex and add, uh, no, I'm sorry, then I, uh, I multiply against my my, rota my camera rotation and the world, um, so this way I can get the orthographic view with the rotation of the camera. Um, the next problem is that my camera is at a certain position, I need to also move my my vertices over. And so I first need to perform the rotation and then I need to form the, the translation. Um, so I'm just going through all the vertices again and adding the, the current point with the current uh, point of the pixel or of the camera. And I can do this with uh, quarter noons or whatever they're called, but it's kind of overkill right now. I just wanted to get something a little bit simple to go out and show you guys. Um, yeah, and so the, the problem with this is that it doesn't know which face to render first. So when it renders everything, it shows all faces. Um, and I don't have any way of doing uh, back face culling or occlusion culling or just not rendering anything that's behind something uh, so I'm attempting to do some kind of Z buffering Z sorting anything that's based on the depth of the current face to the camera um, so I go through the world objects go through all the object faces and through each face I go through all their their indices which is all their uh, all the vertices that they define as what their face is so doing that, I then create the center of the face um, simply by pushing the x, y, and z axis into the center of the x, y, and z, and then I perform the sum of them divided by the length of them, and that gives me the average of the center of the face, which is then resulted into the distance because I take the center of the face um, and find a distance from the the, the camera position. Uh, okay, so once I do that, I get the distance. And if the distance distance is the same, then I'm going to be losing a, a potentially a face. So that distance is just another array. Uh, but within that distance, I define each of the faces. So then I say, you know, here's my face pixels, all the pixels that would be within the face. Uh, this is really just the points of the face, not every single pixel, because I do a, a flood fill or uh, just a, a, a polygonal fill uh, on the canvas object. Okay, so from that, I, uh, I use the distance and I push the, the face pixel into it, or face pixels. Um, and then I do simple sorting, but I can't sort um, uh, a dictionary or, or an object, really, um, because this is an object. Uh, so then I have to perform a, a typical sort. However, for some weird reason, it doesn't support um, sorting big floats. So I have to push my own function here, which is just A minus B to do the sorting for me, which is really stupid. Um, and then I actually get the actual sorted floats. I'm just going to send my coin here. Woo! All right. So now from that, I, uh, I clear the canvas. I set the style to this, which is the gray color that you saw in the background. Uh, and then I just fill it up. Then from that, I take all the sorted faces, 
uh, and actually start to draw all the pixels here. Uh, I'm going to have to reduce the size of this so you guys can actually see. Um, but uh, yeah, I set the stroke, and I set the fill, and then I set the line width. Uh, and that should begin my path. So the first, um, the first pixel on the face needs to be the move to operation. Uh, because the way Canvas is, you can't just define a line out of the blue. You actually need to move it to some point before you can draw that point to another line. Um, so from there, I do that, and then I just do an each operation, which is a mool tools uh, function. And I skip the first because I already did the move to move to operation, and then I do the line to operation here, um, and that's it. Then I rotate the camera uh, plus ten and minus ten. Now the thing about this is that even though I'm rotating the camera, the view should technically be way off. Like it, you should not even be seeing this at some point because you're you're rotating the camera. And the point at which you see this this object will eventually disappear. Now, the reason why this is still showing is because I render everything in a scene regardless of the uh, the camera's viewpoint. And what I mean by that is, if there's objects behind the camera, it'll still render it out based on the rotation of the camera. Um, and this is because I'm doing orthogonic uh, orthogon orthographic rendering which takes all the objects and smushes them into a single 2d plane uh, so regardless of what the camera's actually looking at it's still rendering the entire scene uh, so there's still going to be a lot of uh, uh, work for me to try to do a simple occlusion rendering and, and uh, radio radio uh, rendering based on the camera as well um, but that's just really the, the basics of what I'm actually doing um, the math is not too hard so far, uh, but trying to do something in perspective is definitely a lot more difficult. Uh, so, you know, just a little update. This is day four. I actually started to begin on this, so I think it's pretty good progress. Uh, my next point would be to get this kind of rendering into these uh, boxes up here, so then I can actually click on that monkey and drag him around or whatever. But other than that, that's it. And best of luck to whatever you guys are doing.